Now, I think what you're pointing to is the miracle of the Quran. Isn't it? As the Prophet ﷺ said, all prophets were given something which would cause people to believe in them. This is in Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. The thing which I was given is none other than a revelation, the Quran, which Allah revealed to me. So I hope that I will have the most followers among them on the Day of Judgment. It was the definitive miracle of the Prophet. It is not the only miracle. He was given other miracles, many other miracles. But when he talked about the miracle which was given to the Prophet, to convince their people that they were in fact prophets of Allah, the miracle he mentioned here was the Quran. Not the splitting of the moon, not the water coming from between his fingers, the variety of other miracles which he did by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He mentioned the Quran. So, that gives the Quran a particular significance that we need to grasp, we need to understand. The miracle of the Quran. The other prophets were given miracles which if you ask the people who believe in those prophets, if you ask them to prove that they were prophets of Allah, based on the miracle, could they do it? Moses split the Red Sea. Jews, he, this was a sign to them. But if you asked a Jew to prove that Moses was a prophet of Allah, show us his miracle. Can they show it? No. If you ask the Christians who claim to follow Jesus, can you prove that Jesus brought the dead back to life? Lazarus who was mentioned in their book, who was dead and he called him to get up and he got up. Is Lazarus still around? Can you show him to us? No. So those miracles were limited to the times in which they took place. Because those prophets were sent for particular times. Similarly, the other miracles of the Prophet Muhammad splitting of the moon. Well, I know you've heard, some people said, okay, when uh, Armstrong and the others went to the moon, they saw the split that was on the moon. It's not true. That's a story Muslims made up, unfortunately. Out of desperation to prove that Islam is really the truth, you know, all kinds of stories started to circulate when Neil Armstrong went to the moon. He heard the Adhan on the moon. Right? You all heard that one, right? Reality is that those miracles, we cannot prove them. We believe in them because they are narrated to us by authentic narrations. We believe in Jesus raising the dead, Moses splitting the water. But... Because Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was to be a prophet for all times, then it meant his miracle had to continue, had to be available at all times. And that's what is special about the Quran. It is a miracle in and of itself which will stand until the last days. It is a miracle, fundamentally a literary miracle. Yes, there are issues also in the Quran about science. The Quran speaks something about science. These things were found out now, which we didn't know before. 1,400 years ago, people didn't definitely didn't know. There are other issues found in the Quran, but... Primarily the Quran is a literary 
miracle. Now, occasionally, missionaries may say to us, if I bring a chapter or a book written like your Quran, will you then become a Christian? Because you claim, because the challenge of the Quran first began with imitating the whole Quran itself, as in Surah Al-Isra, Allah says there, say if all mankind and the jinn would come together to produce the like of this Quran, they could not produce its like even though they exerted all their strength in aiding one another. Later, Allah reduced it to 10 surahs. He said, or do they say that he has invented it? Say to them, bring 10 invented surahs like it and call for help on whomever you can besides Allah if you are truthful. That's Surah Hud, 11th chapter verse 13. And then finally in Surah Al-Baqarah, Allah says there, وَإِن كُنْتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِمِثْلِ And if you are in doubt about what I revealed to my servant, then bring a single surah like it. وَدْعُوا شُهَدَاءَكُمْ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ And call your witnesses besides Allah if you are truthful. This is the challenge. So the Christian says, okay, if I bring a chapter written in Arabic like the one that you have, will you then give up your faith and join mine? People get scared when this is presented to them. Because in Arabic, we really can't understand the miracle. Unfortunately, the vast majority of the Muslim world today are not Arabs. And the vast majority of the Arabs don't really speak Arabic anymore. <laughs> I mean, they speak something like Arabic, but not really speaking Arabic anymore. So, if somebody wrote something in Arabic who had a flair for writing, and it sounded like the Quran, then you would be up against the wall, finished. The proof has been brought. So when they bring this challenge, mostly we are afraid. We wouldn't say, yes, you bring it and I'm ready to become a Christian. In the Prophet's time, what do you think the Sahaba would have said if somebody said that? They would have said, bring it. I'm ready. No problem, I'll follow you. Because they were confident that this was in fact a miracle. The only way that we can grasp the miracle of the Quran today, we who don't know any Arabic, or what Arabic we know is not sufficient to grasp the miraculous nature of the Quran. The only way that we can understand it is just to look at it in its historical context. If we look at the life of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and his relationship to the Meccans, the Meccans, they were the center, they were at the center of trade in Arabia. Mecca was the center of of trade where all the trade routes through which all the trade routes passed and it was also the religious center it was the fact that it was the religious center which made it the center of commerce because all of the various tribes used to come to Mecca to worship their idols which were kept around the Kaaba so when Prophet Muhammad وسلم, came along and said all of these idols are false. There is only one God, Allah. And all of the rest of this is false. What did that mean to the Meccans? This was danger. Their whole economic base was threatened. Their position in Arabia 
was threatened. This was a very dangerous call. So they tried to stop him, tried to get him to stop. They talked to him first. Why are you saying this? You want to be the leader of Mecca? Okay, we'll make you leader. Or uh, women. Why, why do people do these things? Women. You want the most beautiful women? We'll take from our daughters the most beautiful and give them to you. Oh, okay, money, money. Maybe it's money. We'll gather from all of our wealth. We'll give it to you. He wouldn't stop. So, okay, let's talk to his uncle, Abu Talib. Try to get him to stop. Put pressure on the uncle. Abu Talib couldn't stop him. He told him, this is his thing, you know. <laughs> it's what he believes in and, you know, he's not giving it up. Okay, let's boycott him. Let's boycott them, starve them into submission. He and his whole clan failed. What's left? We have to kill him. Get young men from all of our various clans, converge in his house and kill him in one stroke. So that his clan would not be able to fight all of us. They failed. He went to Medina. One would think, okay, he went to Medina, enough. They're okay. No, they, f they could see the danger of his dawah. That his dawah was like a disease. If you didn't stop it dead, it was going to come back and get you. So they had to try and get him in Medina. They fought battles, lost lives. They were imprisoned, forced to make a treaty. Think about it. If all they had to do was to make three verses like Inna a'tayna kal kawthar Fasalli li rabbika wanhar Inna shani akahu wal abtar That's all. Three verses like that. If all they had to do was that, don't you think they would do it? Why go through all that fighting, loss of life and all this when all they had to do is that? So it must have meant it wasn't possible. They were the masters of the language at the time. The average Arab in that time he spoke what they call Fusha classical Arabic they loved poetry and prose so much so that they etched their favorite seven in gold plates and hung it on the Kaaba they worshipped their writings and they couldn't produce it this is the sign for us to know that it is not possible so when that Christian brings us writings and says doesn't this sound like your Quran we say it might sound something like it but it isn't but our scholars say what do your scholars know who are the masters of Arabic today scholars in Oxford and Yale and no, certainly not. They cannot compare to the scholars in Baghdad or Damascus or Cairo, etc. Cannot compare. So, the miracle of the Quran is a literary miracle. Proven by the historical fact that the people of its own time could not reproduce it. And they had a need to reproduce it. Because sometimes people make challenges and there's no need to, to, to answer the challenge. For example, in America, we had an individual by the name of Elijah Muhammad back in the 30s who claimed that Allah was a man who came to him 
and designated him to be the messenger of Allah to black Americans. That was his claim. His story was Allah was from the colored peoples. And there were Allahs, not just one Allah. And all the white people were in fact devils. They call it reverse racism, right? White Europeans, they portray the devil as either black or red. So he turned it around and said, no, it's white. <laughs> right? So, he, speaking to his followers, said, I dare any white man to come and prove that he's not a devil. And he repeated this time and time again in his lectures. See, I've been saying this for the last so many years and not a single white man has come along to prove he wasn't a devil. Okay. Well, of course, white people didn't need to go and prove they weren't devils. I mean, who was Elijah Muhammad? There was a little speck on the, you know, on the pavement. <laughs> Insignificant. What power did he have? There was no need, no drive for white Americans to prove they weren't devils. So that kind of claim, you know, see, there are different types of claims. People make claims, right? It's like the Baha'is. The Baha'is, their founder, Ali Shirazi, he wrote a book called Al-Kitab Al-Aqdas, the holiest of books, right? Baha'u'llah is their prophet, right? It is claimed in that book because they want to outdo the Quran and it's written in Arabic. If you don't believe that this book is from Allah, then produce one word like it. Produce one word like it. Well, when the uh, book came out, the Arabs in what is now known as Iran, and there are many Arabs in the south of Iran who are Sunni Muslims. People don't even know about them. About 35% of Iran is Sunni. So all in the south, there are Sunni towns that are Arabic speaking and there are Sunni Muslims there. Anyway, they pointed out, you know, uh, Ali Shirazi, you and Baha'u'llah, this Kitab al-Aqdas that you have, it's got a lot of grammatical mistakes in it. <laughs> you know? Because he, he, he was not an Arab who wrote it. So naturally, in his writing, and he wasn't really an Arabic scholar even, so he, he made a lot of grammatical mistakes. So he said, no, this is a new divine grammar. <laughs> so this type of claim, you can see there's no drive for Muslims to want to prove we can produce one letter, word like it, it's known. It's obvious. Right? So there's no need to respond. Whereas the challenge of the Quran, for it, there was definitely a need to respond. So it's important for us to have that clear understanding of the importance of the Quran. What is it? It is the living miracle of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which will continue till the last day.